G'day Bay Legends, thank you for joining me for another vlog and the start of another series. We are heading south to one of the most beautiful, incredible seascape photography locations we can possibly get in South Australia. I'm four hours from home, got the next two weeks down in this beautiful location to do plenty of photography, fishing, relaxing, gonna be epic. Tonight, we're gonna be doing some big boy photography because I'm growing up. I'm pretty excited about that. 100-400, new lens with the lighthouse. Let's see if I can nail it. So it's not very often that landscape photographers at sunset ask for crystal clear skies. If I was doing night photography, this would be an absolute pearl, but tonight, there are some dolphins over there. The wildlife in this place is absolutely insane. But tonight is the one night a month that the moon rises right as the sun is setting. It is a 99.8% moon. So basically what I want to do with this huge telephoto lens in portrait orientation is get this lighthouse with the moon rising and that beautiful pink blue hue right behind it. <laughs> I just really have to hope that I have aligned this up properly because there's a probably a 50 meter cliff in front of me and I won't see the moon until it's basically photograph time. So cross my fingers and hope to capture an image. I hope I've got this equated properly. I'm no mathematical genius, so I probably haven't got it worked out. And because of that, I'm a smarter man. I've gone through and taken a base image because I don't think, I really don't think when that moon rises, I've got it lined up perfectly. I don't want to run around like a mad chook with thousands and thousands of dollars worth of camera gear, breaking my neck just to take a picture of the moon and this lighthouse together. So I've gone safety first, getting that base image, and also safety first, I've got my back turned towards the water, the tide's ripping in. I thought I could get back a lot further to sort of nullify that angle and shoot the moon a lot earlier because I didn't realize that cliff was so high. But we're working with the conditions we've got and we're maintaining a safe element in our surroundings. That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, maintaining a safe element. With the composition, I've gone through ever so slightly and got the ground in place just to give it some grounding, no pun intended, to the actual image itself, some better orientation for the image. Then the lighthouse probably covers two thirds, if not a little bit more of the whole composition, because that is the main focal point. Then second focal point, when the moon rises, we'll have to change our settings altogether. I'm shooting at about 250 mil, so we could shoot this base image with a 70 to 300, but when that moon rises, if it rises in the right direction, I want to punch out to about 400 mil. I'll see. I will see because I have to change my settings when the moon rises. Obviously, we've got some light in the image, so we'll have to change the settings. And I thought I might as well change a focal range as well and blend that in together. But now it's literally just a waiting game for that moon. Change those settings very quickly and shoot that image. Right now, I'm shooting 160 ISO F8, 250 mil, getting those images 
With the moon rising, I'm not sure what to shoot yet because it's literally my first time out shooting the moon or any type of photography with this lens. Pretty cool. Right, the moment we have all been waiting for is arrived. I'm gonna refocus to about 350, 360 millimeters. Now, 160 ISO, F8 is too bright, so 160 F10. Two second timer, refocus to infinity. Two, one. Balalabushka, baby, I love this. Enjoy it. Uh, what an absolutely bloody crack of a way to start this series. An incredibly picturesque coastline photographed in an entirely different way. That is what the 100 to 400 offers in this sort of environment. But guys, make sure to stick around because there's so much more cracking content to come from here. Incredible seascapes, cliffs, beautiful beaches, wildlife. Now, if you're wondering how I got hold of this lens, it's quite a funny story. Some guy was selling a $3,500 kit of a Fuji kit, and I seen that and knew how much that kit was worth straight away. I rang him, got it the next day. I've sold all the lenses apart from two. This one and another lens, and I'm down $500. That other lens I have to sell is $650 in value. So basically, this cost me a profit of $150. That is not a bad way to get a Fujifilm XF 100 to 400 in your kit. Am I gonna keep this bad boy? I don't know, it's big, it's bulky, it's a workhorse, but this type of environment is going to test out my composition skills, and I wanna see if it's gonna improve my elements in composition the way that I hope it will. If it won't, she's going, she's getting out of there. But guys, make sure to drop below, because this is gonna be an absolute crack of a series from an incredibly beautiful place here in South Australia that I hope I can showcase to you the best possible light from this area, this untouched wilderness that I'm in absolute awe and in love with. So make sure to drop below and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Ciao!